find out how paint's made, I've come here to a paint factory. Here, they make all kinds of paint in hundreds of different colours. But today, they're making a type of paint that goes on walls, and it's called emulsion. They are making hundreds of pots of emulsion paint here, so they need lots of ingredients. And it all starts by weighing out the dry ingredient on scales. It's a bit like weighing out the ingredients for a cake, only much, much bigger. There are four different powders that need to be measured in just the right quantities. These will all help to thicken and whiten the paint. Because even most coloured paints start out with a white base. Next, all of the wet ingredients are measured in here and they're put inside this big silver pot. The main wet ingredient is water and this batch of emulsion needs 350 litres of it. That's enough to fill four bathtubs. The big pot is called the disperser and that is the disperser blade. It gets lowered down into the pot where it will spin round and round to mix all of the wet and dry ingredients together. But first, we have to turn it on. Here it goes. All of the water is swirling round inside and it's time to add the extra ingredients. But I've got my special camera and a light so that we can see what's happening inside. Ready, Joe? The dry ingredients we measured earlier are poured in through a grate, along with some liquid chemicals, which will help keep the paint fresh. Whoa! It's gloopy, isn't it? Can you hear that? It's noisy, isn't it? That's because the disperser blade is spinning really fast and it makes a lot of noise. A liquid called resin is added, which binds all the ingredients together. And then the disperser blade is left to spin for a long time, over two hours. It's time for a cup of tea. It's a lot of spinning and a lot of waiting. Wow! It looks so different! <gasps> I love how it's glooping off the disperser blades. Ooh, it's making a pretty pattern here. Looks a bit like a snowflake. The paint is pumped out of the disperser along these pipes. Now the paint's been mixed, it needs to go in a can. And for that, we use a filling machine. Whoa. It's like a paint shower. Wow, did you see that? But there's still one more thing this paint needs, and that's colour. To give our paint some colour, we use this. It's called a tint machine, and inside are different colour liquids. They're called pigments. Look there. There's a green pigment and a yellow pigment. You select the colour that you want and then you put the can under the machine and then the pigment squirts from the machine into the paint. A little bit of blue, green, orange and lots and lots of yellow. But all of these colours need to get mixed together to make one colour. What do you think that's going to be? To find out, the can is put into another machine called a paint shaker. <gasps> Look at that! The can of paint has been shaken around to mix all of those colours together. It's like it's dancing. Can you shake like a paint can? And here's our final paint. And it's a lovely lime green colour. To make bubble packaging, we have to start here, in a bubble packaging factory. Here, they make 
more than enough bubble packaging to cover 30,000 football pitches every year. That's a lot of bubble packaging. Bubble packaging is made from a material called plastic. We use plastic to make lots of different things, like plastic bags, shampoo bottles, and some toys. Bubble packaging starts here, inside these huge containers called silos. Inside the silos, there are millions of tiny pieces of plastic, and they're called pellets. They look like this. <laughs> wow, that is so satisfying. Can you hear that sound? That's the noise of the plastic pellets being sucked through these pipes as they're carried from the silos into the factory. Here, the pellets are delivered from the pipes into these tanks called hoppers, where they're held until they're ready to go and get heated up. Can you see the pellets falling into the hopper? This metal tube is called a screw and barrel, and inside, those plastic pellets are spinning in a spiral pattern. And as they move along the barrel, they're getting heated till they're really, really hot and runny. It's warm. I can really feel the heat. The melted, runny plastic is then stretched into a thin film, which rolls out onto these metal cylinders. You can see it just there. It looks a little bit like cling film, the stuff you wrap your sandwiches in. But how does that flat film get its bubbles? Well, this is the clever bit. And I've got my special camera so we can take a closer look. See how the metal cylinders are covered in little dimples. The plastic is sucked into those dimples, making lots of little bubble shapes. Now, another layer of flat plastic is quickly put on top. When the two layers stick together, one flat, one bubbly, the air gets trapped inside. are then spun around tubes into big rolls. And sealed in plastic. There you go, it's all bagged up. But I wonder where it's gonna go next. Let's find out with my special camera. on quite a journey, isn't it? Here you are! It arrives in this enormous warehouse. Look at all this bubble packaging, rolled and ready to be sent out across the country. So, there's only one thing left to do. Check it's got some air inside it and give it a pop. And did you know that once you're finished with it, you should be able to pop it in the recycling with your plastic bags? pencils are made here, in a pencil factory. This factory makes a hundred million pencils every year. That's enough to fill five double-decker buses. Most coloured pencils are made with wood on the outside and on the inside, running all the way through the middle, is the colour for colouring. And here they call that the core, a little bit like an apple core. The core of all coloured pencils starts out with a material called clay. And here, the clay looks like a white powder. 
But to turn this into a brightly coloured core, we need something else. We need something called pigment. And pigment is a brightly coloured powder that gives colouring pencils their colour. Looks something like this. Wow, we have a bright pink. In here, there's a blue. We've got, whoa, look at that yellow. We will see lots of different colours being made today. First, the pigment and clay powder is poured into a mixing machine, along with some water. In it goes. The machine mixes the water and powders together and then dries it all out until it becomes a crumbly mixture. This one is going to be a brown coloured core. Finally, to make the core, the mixture is poured into a machine called a billeting machine. Inside, this part of the machine is a huge plunger that rises up from out of the ground and squashes together all of that dried mixture at the top into a cylinder shape. Look! Here it comes! Wow! <laughs> All of the mixture has been squashed together to make a giant core. But we don't need a pencil that big, do we? So the cores are put into a machine called an extruder. Now it's making white cores. The large block of white is going to get pushed through this small hole to make much thinner sticks. You ready? Wow! Look how fast it goes! The thin white sticks are pushed out and caught by chains which roll them out of the machine. I can't believe how many thin sticks that one large block of white is making. The sticks are rolled in a machine to make sure they're straight. Then baked in an oven. And finally, dipped in melted wax. These ones will make blue cores. The coloured cores soak in the wax for three hours. And this will make the pencils much stronger and smoother to colour with. Ah, uh, there we go, the wax has made it lovely and smooth to draw a big smiley face with. <laughs> so now it's time to make the outside of the pencils. These are the pieces of wood that are going to make our pencils. And can you see they have grooves in them? And those grooves are just the right size for one colour core. That means that this piece of wood will make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight coloured pencils and then the other piece of wood just sits on top like that so we kind of make a coloured pencil sandwich the pieces of wood go into a colour filling machine where these yellow coloured cores are slotted into place and fixed with glue and lastly the second piece of wood is stuck on top making our coloured core sandwich it's brilliant Next, those pencil sandwiches are broken down into single colouring pencils that we can use. And for that, the wooden block is pushed through a set of these. And these are what give the pencils their shape. But they are falling out of the machine so quickly. I think we should take a look with my special camera. This is my special slow motion camera. And it lets me see things slow right down. Let's take a look at these pencils coming out of the machine. Wow, they look a bit like little worms popping out. Finally, the pencils are sharpened to give them their pointed ends. And here we have some brand new finished colouring pencils. Oh, and these ones are a brilliant bright green colour. Oh, I can't wait to get colouring in. got my letter and I'm going to post it in this post box here. But to post a letter, we need to put an address on the front of the envelope. 
most addresses start with a house number or a building name and then a street and then a town or a city. And lastly, we put something called a postcode. And a postcode is made up of different numbers and letters. And every street has a different postcode. But there is something missing. I need to stick something to this envelope. Do you know what it is? Yes, that's right, it's a stamp. There we are. Right, let's pop it in the post box and find out what happens. time every day, the postman or postwoman collects all the letters and cards from the post box and takes them to a place called the sorting office. Thousands of letters arrive here every single day in these red bags to be sorted. All of the letters go into this machine. It's called an Integrated Mail Processing Machine, or IMP for short. And the machine sorts the letters. Look, you can see my letter. There it goes. The letters fall into this spinning drum and inside they get separated into different sizes. <laughs> when the letters have made it out of the drum, they travel along these belts until they get here and then they whiz off further down the line. The letters are sorted as they zoom along all these moving belts. They're really fast and really noisy. It's a bit like the letters are on a roller coaster ride. But to find out how the imp machine sorts the letters, I think we need to take a closer look. When the letter goes into the imp machine, it can tell which way up the letter is because the stamp is always on the top right hand corner. If it's upside down, it turns it the right way round. Stamps have invisible strips of special ink on them called phosphor ink. There are two strips for a first class stamp and one strip for a second class stamp. The machine has a light inside called an ultraviolet light. The ultraviolet light can tell which stamp it is by counting how many strips it has. The letter then passes under a camera which reads the address of the postcode. The machine turns the address and postcode into a number and prints it as a series of lines on the envelope. This is called a plan code. The plan code is what's used by all the other machines on the letter's journey to get it to the right place. So, I thought I could show you what the imp machine sees by using my special ultraviolet light. And the ultraviolet light will let us see the phosphor ink stripes on the stamps. Should we take a look? Ready? Wow, look at that! We can see two stripes either side of the first class stamp and one stripe in the middle of the second class stamp. First class letters will arrive more quickly than second class letters. The sorted letters come out of the imp machine on these trays. <laughs> Thanks! And here is our letter. And can you see this little pink strip here? That's the plan code. So from now on, all of the other sorting machines will know where this letter's going. Next, the letter is put onto a trolley loaded into a van with other letters that are going to the same part of the country. And it ends up here, at a local delivery office. The last step is to sort the letters that have been addressed to the CBB's house. They're put into a big grey bag. And now the letters are off to the CBB's house. Postman Pat has delivered the post. Shall we take a look? Mm. 
Wow, here I am inside the CBeebies house. Oh, Rebecca, you got my letter. Yes, thank you, Maddie. It's arrived safe and sound. Oh, we've been finding out how posting a letter works. I can't wait to find out all about it. It was brilliant. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember the name of the machine that read the addresses? That's right, it was called the Imp Machine. Did you hear the sound the Imp Machine made? It was really noisy. And did you see the phosphor ink stripes on the stamps under my UV light? 